today I'm going to talk about the, the history of monitoring of um, the adoption process in Korea. I mean, uh, adoption issue in Korea has a, a variety of I mean, um, aspects, uh, but today I'm going to focus on this, uh, uh, some individual cases and um, recent release of this um, Dutch report, which um, <clears throat> um, uh, which made uh, the, the Dutch government to at least temporarily uh, stop this uh, in, inter-country adoption. And um, to begin with, I've been working uh, on a, a, a very different issues, um, um, including adoption, but uh, I mean, international adoption and this alternative childcare issue, it's just a, a part of my work. And uh, I've been working on this issue uh, more than 10 years. And uh, two things actually uh, were very shocking to me when I first encountered this um, um, area. The first thing was uh, this, the number of inter-country inter adoption from Korea is uh, one third of the, I mean, the world um, inter-country adoption in the last half a century. And I mean, it's, it's very hard to understand the situation, this, this statistic. And, um, and most Koreans, they don't know about this situation. And uh, so that was very shocking. And um, it was very hard to kind of uh, really ha had a hard time to understand the, the, the history and the, the, the situation itself. The second thing is uh, baby box. I think Korea is one of very few countries where baby box is regarded as a very good alternative uh, of uh, abandoning uh, children. And um, once we filed a complaint to the National Human Rights Commission of Korea uh, on the issue of this baby box, because at least this baby box facility violated uh, some uh, laws and rules. And uh, it's, I mean, and uh, the Committee on uh, Child Rights, UN Committee on Child Rights, they reiterated um, that this baby box is uh, uh, violating some provisions of CRC. But shockingly, I, I, I uh, had a phone call with this investigator within the National Human Rights Commission and his comment words like this. <clears throat> well, this pastor is doing a good thing with a good will. Why are you complaining? Well, and we got the result that the, the case dismissed. And there was this uh, newspaper reporter who continuously kind of reporting the issue of baby box, actually trying to kind of uh, positive aspects of baby box. And this reporter was awarded human rights award by the National Human Rights Commission of Korea. So that kind of situation was really shocking. And uh, and this means there is a really long way to go in relation to the change of perception of the general public and policy and law and uh, these uh, practices. So that's the kind of starting point then and even now. So we, we see from time to time different uh, news articles uh, about uh, adoption or inter-country inter adoption and um, even in 1990s, most of adoptees, uh, 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 this inter-country adoption adoptees, they they are <clears throat> from uh, unwed mothers and uh, single parents families, and uh, even at that time uh, in 1990s, uh, the Korea was the country that's sending the biggest number of adoptees to the U.S. and this kind of you know, uh, different statistics and uh, issues uh, raised from time to time uh, in the news. And baby box, I mean, there are a huge number of baby box news articles. Most of them are uh, kind of on the positive side um, towards these baby boxes. And um, they are saying, well, you know, babies are being abandoned and uh, these baby boxes are saving these children and the government should do something about it. Well, we agree with the last point, the government should do something about it. 
And on the other hand, there are some news articles like uh, emphasizing that the, there's a problem with this uh, post adoption management system or <clears throat> because these adoptees are from these unwed mothers, there must be some kind of social protection or social welfare system supporting these um, unwed mothers. So very different uh, perspectives and different aspects have been covered um, in the media. As you all probably know, this uh, revision of, actually it was a comprehensive revision of special act on adoption in 2011 that changed uh, a lot of things. So these are some changes that um, introduced by this uh, revision bill, which means that before this uh, revised uh, act, uh, these things are not in place or <clears throat> the, the situation, the reality was the, the, the opposite of the, the changes we, uh, uh, that have been made. So mm -hmm. there is an explicit provision saying that, um, that only after pursuing domestic adoption, uh, uh, overseas adoption is possible. And there is a kind of very <clears throat> restrictive uh, qualification of adoptive parents and there was, and most uh, uh, unique kind of um, um, or important uh, aspect of this revision was introduction of uh, the approval of adoption by family courts. Before, before this bill, actually it was adoption agencies who would you know, uh, do all the process. And introduction of consideration period. Before that, um, as you all probably know, uh, the, the, the biological mother, uh, they, they gave up their children even before birth. Uh, they signed these uh, some papers, which we think is legally uh, uh, invalid, but uh, I mean, they signed these papers, but uh, with this new revision, um, uh, there is a, this uh, consideration period, but it's only just one week. Original uh, draft was, uh, I think, it, as far as I remember, it was like two, one, one or two months, but um, there was a kind of negotiation going on and um, it reduced to one week, which we think is too short for consideration period. Full adoption system, which means it's a, a kind of a strict severance of family ties. So there is no inheritance, um, uh, for example. Establishment of Korean uh, adoption services, um, well, it, it is supposed to set up and manage an integrated database of adoptions, but um, it wasn't the case afterwards. Protection of adoptive rights to information. Well, before this revision, there wasn't any kind of, uh, you know, some articles, but now we do have some articles, but um, uh, as you all probably know, I mean, this, this uh, issue of uh, searching uh, for uh, biological parents or families and right to information, the, the prov prov provisions themselves and the practice are uh, really uh, problematic. So there is one case which happened in, I think, 2014, where <clears throat> Uh, a child who was adopted um, by an American family who, and, and after just three months he died and uh, later it was found out that um, it was a kind of um, <clears throat> death by child abuse a skull fracture is currently being pointed to I mean is being pointed to as, as the cause of his death and the, the criminal procedures went on. And, um, but so it happened uh, third, on the 3rd of February and uh, the case, the, the, the parents were indicted um, on 18th of February. And by, at that time now, we, uh, the, 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 there was a media coverage of this case and 
Um, and the, the right, I mean, the, the uh, response uh, of the Holt um, uh, right after this media coverage was really um, shocking because uh, it, it, it tried to kind of um, persuade the public that there's nothing wrong with the process, nothing wrong with the adoptive parents, and uh, maybe, uh, you know, uh, this, uh, the, this uh, boy actually just uh, died of some, you know, um, <clears throat> pre existing disease or something like this. So at that time, some, some uh, adoptive groups and some NGOs, they were uh, really into this case. And uh, just uh, one or two days after the, the media coverage, there was a protest in front of Holt, and uh, there was press release and a question sent to uh, the Ministry of Health and Welfare. And we were very active at the time. So we were able to get reply from the ministry. And also uh, we uh, uh, kind of pushed the ministry to uh, conduct this special audit of Holt and they released the, the, the results of the um, audit. So uh, in the reply from the minister, they, they emphasize a, a, a number of points. One is, um, so they will make sure that uh, domestic adoption goes first. Um, there's a typo there anyway. And um, they will make sure that um, when they're dealing with this alternative child care. Um, uh, they'll try to <clears throat> return these children to their own families um, if possible. And uh, they're gonna review all these uh, issues uh, every three months, which didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, recently we found out that they are doing this uh, review annually. Uh, so they, they didn't actually uh, uh, kept their promise and post adoption service for one year for inter-country adoption and uh, providing guidance, guidelines. But um, as far as I know, they, they didn't come up with any, any guidelines. Supervision of adoption, financial structure, operation adoption fees reviewing every three months of these adoption agencies. But uh, I don't think it had really happened. I mean, at that time, there was a, a, the adoption fee was a, a one of a big issues. And uh, at that time, Minister, Ministry of Health and Welfare promised that they're gonna set up kind of ceiling of these fees and a, a, a recommendation of some uh, kind of uh, appropriate kind of uh, fees, something like that, but uh, they didn't do anything about these adoption fees. And they promised the penalties for Holt, sorry, another type of halt and uh, ad adoption agencies involved. But I mean, there was some uh, small fine um, towards these um, adoption agencies, but nothing more. And the result of the special audit was really interesting because uh, the result said halt is not doing anything. It's not kind of uh, following any rules everything is inappropriate. So not appropriate in prioritizing domestic adoption. Uh, it's, it's, it's operation, it's not kind of securing const concentration periods. Uh, there is a, a um, unreasonable increase in international adoption fees and um, not enough verification of qualification of adoptive parents, um, not appropriate um, in concluding MOUs with overseas counterparts. And uh, uh, it's not really doing a good job in post domestic adoption management and so on. So, I mean, this result was really shocking and um, it was uh, very important to uh, follow um, the results of this um, audit, but uh, I don't think the ministry was really serious about these results. And uh, at that time, I cannot really remember, but um, we were not, <clears throat> uh, we, we failed actually kind of uh, to follow up of this um, um, audit. So I think that uh, 
we should kind of um, reflect upon the, the situation and um, yeah, actually review you know our activities at the time. Another story, uh, it, it happened last year, and it's, it's a right now it's a big news in in Korea. Um, um, not just by media, but um, by the National Assembly, and even the, the president said, said something about this. And the picture shows actually, you know, after the abuse, how how this um, child, um, the physical condition of this child changed. And so this is a um, um, part of a news article. And um, so this is what happened. I mean, there was continuous kind of uh, child abuse against this uh, uh, child uh, by this adoptive uh, mother. And um, <clears throat> very interestingly, um, when there was this Hyunsu case, um, one of the excuse of this uh, halt was, uh, well, it's just uh, Mongolian sports. Uh, it's not, you know, wounds. Uh, it's not it's not kind of uh, really kind of physical wounds it's just uh, mongolian sports uh, you know children have and same same kind of excuse or explanation was given by this adoptive mother or adoptive parents so yeah things repeat and um after this incident uh, the the government uh, 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 actually kind of announced its position to, to for some reform and they emphasize that they're going to make adoption a public social welfare child pro protection system so um, they will try to kind of you know increase the involvement of these uh, public actors or the the governments and um, minimizing the the role of adop adoption agencies but um we are not quite sure, you know, what what what's, what will be the actual kind of um, measures uh, they would adopt. And um, so now, concerning this case and um, building upon this uh, this um, advocacy uh, in relation to this case, uh, we now are trying to do two things. One is um, uh, re kind of um, re kind of uh, mobilizing um, the, the legal reform. Um, so revision, uh, another revision of a special adoption act. And uh, the second uh, initiative we are um, taking is um, enactment of a, a special act to investigate <clears throat> child abuses, um, which led to um, that that's of these children. So that's the uh, second story I can share. And um, another <clears throat> issue you probably have faced um, recently, there was a release of this uh, report by the Dutch government or the, the, the committee appointed by the Dutch government uh, on the, the issue of this uh, inter-country adoption. And um, they investigated um, a num almost 200 cases um, from five countries, Bangladesh, Brazil, Colombia, Indonesia, Sri Lanka. But they say, well, they, they, they actually kind of investigated 23 countries, which include uh, Korea. And um, they come up, came up with the, uh, the findings that there are numerous um, and various uh, child abuse, uh, I mean, abuses um, uh, involved. So they decide to at least temporarily um, stop this uh, inter-country adoption. And these are the lists of these uh, abuses um, that happened in relation to this uh, inter-country adoption. And um, it's very interesting because um, all of the, the examples or, or categories actually are not that unfamiliar. I mean, uh, in relation to um, adoption issues uh, in, in Korea and outside. 
corruption, make it difficult to impossible to establish origins and identity of adoptees by falsifying documents, deliberately stating inaccurate information, causing children to be given up in return for payment through or caution, trafficking, kidnapping, baby farming. And it's, it's difficult to say it's illegal, but um, at least unethical acts, including causing children to be given up under false pretexts or moral pressure, taking advantage of mother's poverty or the social cultural circumstances such as uh, natural disasters or social taboo, inadequate archiving, lack of care when recording information and lack of transparency in documentation. So uh, it's, it's, I think it, it all, and actually this report is saying that all these abuses actually happened in 23 countries, including Korea. So, and there is um, some statistics um, in relation to this report. And uh, we found out, I mean, it's, it's uh, in, on the BBC, I mean, and South Korea is, is the, the, the country that actually sent the biggest number of adoptees to Netherlands, at least until 1992. If you combine these two uh, figures, Korea has the, the biggest number. And so we are really curious. I mean, I was very curious why, why you know, the Korea was not included in five countries. And uh, the excuse or explanation by the Dutch government was, um, well, they started with these uh, cases that was uh, legally kind of um, lay, raised, uh, I mean, whether it's uh, some litigation or, or some, some cases reported. So they focused on these five countries, that's, that's the explanation uh, by the Dutch government. But um, as far as I know, some adoptees groups, um, uh, they are uh, struggling to make the make a Dutch government to um, investigate all the cases, uh, including other countries, uh, not included in five countries. And um, in Korea, um, we are trying to approach the Ministry of Health and Welfare and at least um, um, ask them what, what their position is, what their position is uh, in relation to this Dutch report. Uh, I mean, it, it's, it doesn't say it's, it's clear, but at least um, the abuses in, uh, 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 kind of uh, abuses explained and the uh, countries they mentioned. I mean, Korea is uh, obviously uh, included uh, within this report. So we'll be asking the Ministry of Health and Welfare what, their, um, what will be their response and what will be their kind of um, follow-up measures afterwards. So not just the issue of this, I mean, the uh, abuse or deaths, um, we have been um, doing a number of um, advocacy work um, sometimes uh, more focused, sometimes we are not that kind of um, successful. But at least uh, we, uh, I think most of uh, um, advocates, um, uh, adoptees um, working on this issue, I think agree, will agree that there is still need of establishment of central authority. Um, the, the organization we, I, I just uh, mentioned is not central authority. Um, in, in function, so that should deal with um, all the issues concerned with alternative child care and strengthening the municipal government's um, function um, in decision making on alternative child care. And uh, we will also need more organized and um, enough um, support for unwed mothers. And um, one of the very unique or special issue in Korea is limiting the role of adoption agencies. Um, and finally, we we have this issue of family birth family search, and uh, we are now actually kind of <clears throat> discussing how we're going to reform this um, uh, particular kind of uh, issue uh, within the law and practice.
I think I have uh, another 15 minutes, but uh, I'll stop here and I will secure more time for you to um, uh, you know, share your thoughts. Thank you.